Good morning and welcome to MorningEncouragement.com. My name is Glenn Siepert. It's great to see you here today. Uh, this is vlog entry number 49. Four, nine, 49. Uh, we are almost to number 50. Not really planning anything big for 50. I just think it's pretty cool uh, that we're almost there. That's a lot of uh, videos. That's a lot of vlog entries, uh, and it's good. It's all good. But I'm sitting here. I'm looking at something in my Bible that I want to share with you. Uh, but before I do that, do you have an iPhone? Do you have an iPhone? I work for Apple right there. I work for Apple. And uh, so, of course, I have an iPhone. But if you have an iPhone, uh, you need to download uh, this app right there, the Encourage Me app. That's the Morning Encouragement app. And let me go back here. Boom, you hit that. Opens up with that cool logo we got. And that's your home page, all the newest content. Uh, this video will show up there soon. Uh, you got the blog, which is basically the uh, written entries right there. And then you've got the media tab. The media tab will give you the audio, the podcast, uh, the vlogs, the videos, ebooks, uh, last couple of sermons I've preached. You've got the connect tab, uh, which is all the social media places. And also at the bottom, you can subscribe to our Monday morning uh, newsletter. Then there's an about section that I had to have there uh, just because you have to. And so I wrote something. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of vague and weird. But anyway, you should go download it. It's free. Uh, the goal is for us to have something encouraging in our pocket at all times so that no matter what's going on during the day, we can kind of just whip that out, uh, give it a quick read, a quick listen, or whatever the case may be, and have a little bit of encouragement. Uh, so I'm sitting here looking at my, my Bible. I've been processing through something the last couple of days uh, that's really... Uh, got me kind of stuck, not stuck, I guess maybe the better word would be it's kind of struck me um, in a deep place, uh, but I'm reading through the Bible in 90 days uh, with some people who follow MorningEncouragement.com. We've got a, a closed Facebook group that we're in and we're kind of chatting a little bit and sharing some things that we're learning um, along the way. Uh, we're in Second Chronicles right now, but a few days ago we were in the books of First and Second Kings, uh, which is the story uh, essentially of all the different kings of, of Israel. Some were really good and some were really evil. Some were really smart. Some were really dumb. And uh, so it's an interesting read. It kind of reads just like one story after the other. But there's one section that's a little bit longer, uh, and it's the story of Solomon. You know, Solomon was uh, King David's son. And before King David died, he had drew up the, the plans uh, for the temple that he was going to build for the Lord. And so he gave these plans to Solomon and said to Solomon, you're going to be the guy who's going to build this, this temple uh, for the Lord. And it's going to be huge. It's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. And the Bible says in uh, 1 Kings chapter 6 that Solomon had spent seven years building this temple. Seven whole years just to build and construct this, this huge uh, temple for the Lord. But then the very next verse, which is chapter 7, verse 1, says that it took Solomon 13 years, however, to complete the construction of his palace. It took him twice as long to build his own house than it took him to build God's house. And I always thought to myself, I mean, I, I think I read this passage maybe the first time when I was in, when I was in college. I remember thinking to myself, like, what a jerk this guy is right like he had to have his house bigger than god's house i mean god gave the guy everything he could possibly want there's a story uh, a few chapters back where god appears to solomon and says hey i'll give you whatever you want what do you want i'll give it to you like like a genie in a bottle almost i'll give you whatever you want solomon says i just want wisdom you know because you know you gave me all these people to lead in this nation uh, they're all kind of really stupid people, and I really don't know what to do with them. So some wisdom about how to handle them would be would be fantastic. So God says, great, that's the right answer. I'm not only going to give you wisdom, but I'm also going to give you all the riches of the world. So Solomon becomes this like really rich dude. I mean, he's got gold, he's got jewels, he's got rubies, he's got, he's got everything you could possibly imagine. Uh, he's got it. And so it always struck me, 
that he took him twice as long to build his house. It kind of ticked me off a little bit. You know, who's this guy I think he is? I mean, building his house bigger than God's house? Like, it has to be bigger. It's got to be better. It's got to have more gold and more jewels and more bronze and more everything else than God's house. I mean, come on. That doesn't seem right to me, right? And it always kind of kind of annoyed me a little bit. But when I was reading this passage, I thought to myself, well, let me go back and kind of maybe see what other people have to say. So I dug out some of my some of my books from uh, seminary, some of my commentaries, and I, I looked through them. And I found this one uh, guy, I don't remember which one it was in, but he said that, you know, maybe Solomon didn't take twice as long to build his palace uh, because it was bigger than God's temple. But maybe it's because he wasn't as focused on his house as he was on God's house. Like maybe God's house got done a lot quicker because he was very focused on it. He was very intentional with it. He was pouring all of his time, all of his energy into God's house. And so therefore, it got built a lot quicker than his house got built. Hmm. And not only that, he said, but maybe it took longer because the materials that he used for, for his house were not prepared and ready to go as they were for the temple. Right, David had drew up the plans for the temple. David had been talking about the temple for a long time. So, so maybe the, the stuff was already prepared and ready to go so that when Solomon stepped on the scene, boom, 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 we could start hammering some nails, we could start putting the jewels in, we can get this thing ready to go super quick. But maybe the case that wasn't the case with Solomon's palace. Maybe the trees had to be cut down, they had to be carved, the, the uh, metals had to be molded and, and formed into the different shapes and stuff like that. So maybe his house just took twice as long, not because it was bigger, but just because everything wasn't as ready to go and he wasn't as focused on it as he was on God's temple. And so as I was thinking about all of this, what really struck me is if I'm thinking this way about Solomon, right? If I first read this story, let's say 10 years ago, and for 10 years I thought, man, Solomon's such a jerk because it took him 13 years to build his house when it only took him seven to build God's house. Who else in my life am I thinking about like that? Hmm. Like if I misjudged Solomon's intentions, who else's intentions in my life am I misjudging? Hmm. Something to think about, right? And I think that we have to think about that kind of stuff. Because as Christians, right, as followers of God, uh, we're supposed to be uh, people who uh, build and foster a sense of community. And if I'm misjudging people's intentions, if I'm casting judgment on intentions, first of all, and then misjudging those intentions, secondly, uh, am I really being somebody who fosters and builds community? Am I really being somebody who's welcoming and open to everyone? Probably not, right? So I want to ask you, who's the Solomon in your life today? Who's the person in your life who maybe you're misjudging their intentions? You're reading one line of their story, seeing one thing that they did, and you're judging them as a jerk. That guy is a moron because he dot dot. And I wonder today, if you can think about that person in your head, if you can get a picture of them, the person in your life that you think is a real jerk, if you could get a picture of that in your head, can you maybe retell their story in a different way? Could you maybe allow yourself to think and dig a little bit deeper and say, maybe their intentions aren't what I always thought they were, but maybe their intentions are a little bit differently. And would that then shine a different light on them in your life? So, so who is the Solomon in your life? In, in, your, in your church, uh, in your workplace, in your class, at school, maybe in your family, in your circle of friends, or in your friends' circle of friends? Who is the person in your life that you're casting hate on? You're, you're throwing shade on that person. Uh, you, you're, you're looking down on that person. You're thinking that person is a jerk and a moron. Who is that person? And what would it look like for you to maybe look at their story and their intentions a little bit differently? And if you did that, uh, would it allow you, would it cause you to be more welcoming and more open uh, to that person? Something to think about. Who's the Solomon in your life? So anyway, I hope that challenges you. I uh, hope it pushes you a little bit. Sometimes I think that 
um, in the midst of encouragement, in the midst of being uplifted, we also need to be pushed um, a little bit in things like this. So think about it. Who's the Solomon in your life? Retell their story. See what it does. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.